the Serengeti and its labyrinth of gallery forests. Territory of a leopardess. Shadow-like, she sets off to hunt in her domain. To her family, she's both caring provider and fearless defender. That means sudden death for many denizens of the bushlands and his only chance of survival in an unforgiving habitat. This is her story. Northern Serengeti. A quiet brook. Its banks are lined with gallery forest a confusion of waterways, tangled undergrowth, and tall trees that covers kilometers. It's the home of a leopardess. She has brought up a son here. Now, roughly a year old, he looks almost like a fully grown leopard, but he's still playful and boisterous. He survived the toughest and most dangerous months. Now he confidently explores his surroundings, interested in everything. In late July, the great wildebeest migration crosses the border from Tanzania into Kenya, streaming into the Masai Mara Reserve and into the Lepidesis territory. Mother and son are on high alert. Wildebeest calves are valuable prey. Not only for leopards. Lions hunt in the bush too. Big cats can take each other by surprise here. All the big predators are deadly rivals because they compete for the same resources. Right now, the leopard is concentrating on her primary task. So is the lioness. At the last moment, she senses something is wrong. The lioness got there first but that may have saved the leopardess. She wouldn't win a fight with a lion. Her son does the right thing, slinking away unnoticed. Bad luck with the hunt. Good luck to emerge unscathed. No feast today. They make do with the remains of an earlier kill. Even though they hunt together, the older her son gets, the less she will tolerate him. Caring for him is hard work, as he needs more and more food. When the cupboard is bare and they're on short rations, every sliver of bone counts. But for the next three months, there are enough successful wildebeest hunts for the leopardess to feed herself and her son. 
and he spends much of his time high in a tree, observing the scene, looking out for smaller prey. In September, when the migration continues on its circuit, bringing the wildebeest back towards the southern Serengeti. It's time for the leopardess to return to local prey. An adult reedbuck is plenty of food for two leopards. The male can eat to his heart's content. Now a year and a half old, he's an impressive young leopard, almost as big as his mother. If it were up to him, their relationship could continue like this forever. But the comfortable stay at Hotel Mama will soon come to an end. She has a gentleman caller. An imposing figure with the powerful neck muscles of an adult male in his prime. Males cruise their territories, covering those of multiple females on the lookout for opportunities to mate. Scent marks she's been spreading guide him. Around this time, the leopardess loses interest in her son and often roams alone. She even loses interest in hunting. She could easily have crept up on this hair from her cover in the bushes but she ignores it. She wanders through her domain for days, regularly spraying her scent. Changes are on the way for the leopard family. A few days later, a rare sight, a leopard couple in peaceful harmony. Leopards join leopardesses only for a few days when the female is receptive. It's almost the only chance to see an elusive male out in the open. In a glade of the gallery forest, they start mating. They'll mate frequently for days. Multiple couplings are necessary to stimulate ovulation. So for a few days, there's plenty of action in the thicket. Her son is still at their base near the river. He now has his mother's last kill to himself.
the mighty male mating with his mother may well be his own father. The youngster is wise to keep out of the way. His neighbors, the gray-backed fiscals, are not thrilled by his presence here. He's gorging himself right next to the brooding female on her nest. With these fiscals, the last brood stay with the parents and help to raise the next generation. That's why so many birds are squawking around here. He's had enough. While he looks for a shady place for an afternoon rest, the food delivery is picked up again, undisturbed. He finds a secluded spot on the cool bank of the brook. While kilometers away at a denser stretch, his mother and her mate are taking a break. Leopard mating is not a silent affair, in contrast to their stealthy hunting. And they haven't finished yet, not by a long way. The noisy honeymoon is audible far and wide. And it draws the attention of a lioness. What she hears is two competitors. And they're distracted. The male takes a break. For a while, it's quiet in the forest. The lioness may lose track for a moment. But it won't be silent here for long. Are those bitten ears still listening out? Since lions and leopards hunt the same prey, this could be just the moment to be rid of a rival. That was close. For now, the honeymoon is over. At the end of October, the rainy season once again has its grip on the land.
The great leopard male is far away, patrolling his huge territory. His range covers those of several leopardesses. He will keep moving to find one of them in Estrus. His task in life is to survive and reproduce. But in weather like this, even he needs a bit of shelter. The downpour transforms the gallery forests in just a few days. Used to crossing dry riverbeds, this giraffe now encounters deep pools. It looks like it needs a while to think it over. This could be why. The crocodiles spend their dry season in hollows in the riverbanks. Now they're about again. But they're patient. A giraffe is a lot of work. The leopardess now spends plenty of time alone. She still needs to look after her son, but he's beginning to fend for himself. Leopards are loners. As the rain falls, tiny rivulets fill up and merge. New waterways form day by day. Linking the different branches of brooks, they become highways for crocodiles. An irresistible scent borne by the water tempts the ancient reptile into a side arm. A hippo has died here, a mountain of meat that the giant catfish would love to share, but the hippo's skin is too tough. They'll have to wait. At first, even the crocodile can tear off only a toenail. It's better than nothing, and his digestive juices will soon get to work on it. It's on a roll. The leopardess's territory now offers enough food for mother and son. High water levels and rich vegetation draw plenty of animals to the riverbank. The pools are cloudy from sediment washed down from the banks water full of fish, frogs, and insect larvae. The saddlebill stalk senses fishy prey with its powerful beak, extra attuned to movement. It can't expect to see prey in this muddy room. Each bird has its own technique for fishing in the murky waters. The hammercock seeks its victim just below the surface. Or wherever there's the chance of a delicacy. The little lesser striped swallows are busy collecting mud for the nests they build under rock overhang. Meanwhile, grey-headed kingfishers have long been feeding young in their nests. 
and the Egyptian geese let their chicks get on with it on their own. Everyone works with their own tools and in the way that suits them. In the succulent green bushland, the young leopard is surrounded by feasting herbivores. Fig trees, above all, attract fruit lovers in hordes, like these African green pigeons. That's nothing for him, but the tree is a great lookout point and a good place to rest. All around him, animals are enjoying the rich gifts of the generous season. And that's not only true of the herbivores. Insects offer an inexhaustible supply of nourishment. Beyond the bush, on the savanna grasslands, it's the high point of the year for the ungulates, too. The impalas roam far and wide, with no shortage of grass. Right now, they have no need to venture into the dangerous thicket. The Cory Bustard just wants attention. Specifically, for females to admire his mating plumage. Everywhere, fawns and calves take their first unsteady steps. This Thompson's gazelle comes into the world in the heat of the day when the predators are resting and won't be out. It will spend the next few weeks pressed against the grass in an environment entirely without cover. Impala mothers have another way to deal with the same problem. At first, they hide their young in thick vegetation, leading them out for short visits to the herd. On the return journey, she's on her own. There's no time to waste to get the baby back to cover. For the young leopard, these weeks are a time of opportunity, but he still has a lot to learn. That fawn has disappeared as though swallowed up by the earth. He knows the baby must be somewhere near. But the mother antelope knows exactly where he is. The young leopard isn't paying attention to the wind. Cleverly, the mother tempts him further and further away from the hiding place. He tries to cut her off, but then a diptych gets in the way. <sighs> 
no good. The experienced Impala mother is leaving the field. Now he'd need a huge amount of luck to find the fawn. He knows better than to try. January, four months on. The leopardess has hidden her new arrivals in thick undergrowth, licked clean with no scent and little danger they'll be discovered. She stays away as much as possible so as not to betray their hiding place. In the daytime, she's mostly out hunting. The two baby females are alone most of the day. It's the perfect nursery, utterly inaccessible, completely inexpicuous. The branches pen the cubs against the steep slope like bars on a baby's cock. During the day, the leopardess may be kilometers away. In the late afternoon, it's time to look after her young. She doesn't follow the winding river, but takes the direct route across the savannah. The last thing she needs is someone following her. But today, the danger is in front of her. The old adversaries are out on the plains again. The leopardess is focused on her hungry cubs waiting for her in the thicket far away. It's late, she doesn't want to waste time. Again, at the last moment, her sharp senses register the danger. Neither cat is a particularly good runner, especially over long distances. They're too far apart for this to become an attack. The leopardess runs. And the lioness chases. Just to make a point. The leopardess won't risk returning to the nursery until her competitor has left the scene. The next morning, she's safely in the hideout. After suckling the babies, she licks them clean again, once more clearing their scent. The cubs are now 10 days old. They have only just opened their eyes and can still barely walk, but they are house-trained to poo outside. The trouble is, soiling outside the hideout could betray its location. So the mother moves the babies regularly. Ow. 
When she grips them on the neck, the babies fall into a carrying trance so they don't struggle. She's in a hurry now. She wouldn't want to be caught outside with her cubs. It's always possible the lioness might still be around. With one done, she comes back for the second. But this was a good hiding place. In fact, it's quite tricky to extricate the second cub. Finally, she threads her out of the thicket. She brings the young un together with her sibling. This time, in the safety of a warthog burrow. These holes are valuable as halfway houses, where her young will be invisible during the day. They become very elusive now, disappearing for months in secret hiding places in the gallery forest. These are the most dangerous weeks for the cubs. Rain, cold, and rival cats take a heavy toll of young leopards. Three months later, the young family has survived the critical period. Both cubs are healthy and in good spirits. But they're not used to open grassland and are easily scared. The impala buck is uneasy as well. These are leopards. Up to now, the cubs have spent their whole life in the dense thicket of the gallery. Now, the leopardess takes them to the old hunting grounds she's avoided since the sudden end of her honeymoon. In the fissures of the jagged river banks, she knows dozens of places to hide where her offspring will be safe. The terrain around the brook is an exciting adventure playground for them. Irresistibly curious, they follow their mother around their new home. There's so much to discover. But their mother knows not every neighbor is harmless. They should stay close. And the leopardess is always on the lookout for trouble. For instance, baboons can be very aggressive towards leopards. Strong males can spell real danger for the cubs. Here, the monkeys haven't noticed the leopards yet. And the cubs have no idea how to behave towards their new neighbors. They're seeing these animals for the first time. The baboons have young too. With her cubs in tow, she'd better keep her distance. Now the baboons have noticed the leopards some way off. She hurries to make space 
so the monkeys won't feel threatened. It's all a little much for the cubs. A kilometre on, she calls a halt and revives them with a healthy dose of milk. They're being watched. Soon the cubs are back on form, scampering around. A male leopard at the edge of the forest is keeping them in his sights. The leopard mother is fully aware of the intruder. Like all big cats, leopard males can be dangerous to young that are not their own. She'll keep a close eye on him. As evening comes, the male is still watching. Finally, the female decides to approach. The cubs don't seem to notice her tension. This is her older son, who has survived on his own in familiar territory. He's anything but welcome. Any male in the vicinity of her young is a threat. He is uncertain. Then something unexpected happens. One of the cubs simply goes up to its older brother, who it's probably seeing for the first time. Intimidated by his mother, he daren't accept the youngster's offer to play. He fears his angry mother, but wants to stay in this familiar environment. The second cub tries to win a playmate, but mother is not amused. The adult son mustn't make a mistake. The leopardess is uncertain too. She breaks eye contact and in a peace offering sits down. The cubs don't give up. Now the first one rejoins the game. A difficult moment for Big Brother. His mother could interpret any movement as an attack. He must leave. She needs all her territory for herself to raise the new generation. The young male will spend the following weeks seeking a territory not claimed by another male. He'll make it through by killing small animals and is soon far away from his home area. He must obey strict rules on his way to independence. One is stay clear of hyenas and lions. There's no fooling with a big lion. And the hyenas judge the situation correctly. 
not a good place for a young leopard. He moves on. On his way, he prefers areas that remind him of places used by his mother, so he mostly follows thickets alongside brook. It's harder for a young male to find a territory than for a young female. Daughters are often tolerated by their mother at the edge of her range. They may even take it over when she gets old. Sons, though, seek their own hunting areas and at the same time look for mates. They need to travel far enough to meet unrelated females. They also have to conquer big territories that cover many female ranges. All this makes it harder for beginners. He may be trying for years, and many a hopeful youngster never succeeds. He's distracted by a male impala, noisily trying to keep the females in his territory under control. If males really fight, there can be an exhausted or even a wounded loser. It's worth waiting for the result. But here the challenger thinks better of it pretty quickly, and the buck sees him off before blood is drawn. Nothing here for him. His search for a new home becomes an epic odyssey through the northern Serengeti. In the Maasai Mara, ebony brushland has spread over huge areas in the past decades. That's why, though he is almost 20 kilometers from the thickets of his youth, the environment looks very familiar to him. These bull giraffes can't seem to settle their endless evening duel. They've been at it for hours. They're young, ardent, and well-matched. Older bulls are hardly ever seen to fight, and certainly not for so long. He's fascinated. Strange creatures, 
doing strange things. At dusk, many ungulates gather in the open, sharing eyes and ears to spot predators. The zebras seem to have picked up on the mood of the giraffes. In the last rays of twilight, the animals settle down for the vigil of the night. Even the combative giraffes call it a day. For the leopard, this is the most important time of the day. The herd of impala females is too much of a challenge, but there are young bachelor males and old weak bucks. They might wander carelessly close to the edge of the brush. He may not yet have the massive muscles of a fully grown male, but by now he's an experienced, skillful hunter, and it could be time for his first attempt at an impala. The bucks are heavier than he is and have sharp horns, but he can't ignore this chance. Perhaps he chose the wrong victim. But if this is a test, he will pass. This triumph will boost his confidence and greatly improve his chances of victory in the territorial disputes that lie ahead. Many kilometers away beside the brook that was his home for so long, his mother is raising the twins as devotedly as she did their brother. The two cubs are healthy and strong. Once again, an impala is secured in a tree. The youngsters dig in, but they're not especially hungry and they're in no hurry. Everything is fine. And even at this tender age, each spends plenty of time on its own. Leopard cubs play far less together than young lions. When they grow up, they will be loners like their mother. For a long time to come, she will work hard for her family. If all goes well, her daughters may one day inherit the realm of this leopardess. To become in their turn, the elusive queens of the gallery forest. Mm -hmm.